A warm welcome to you, my dear children. We meet again with a new lesson, a fresh new lesson. That is unit number 10, Purchases Journal, Sales Journal, and General Journal. In your syllabus, in your textbook, unit number 10. Yeah? All right. In this lesson, as uh, the topic, the heading shows you, we are going to discuss about these prime books. Discussing about these prime books. All right. Purchases journal, sales journal, and general journal. Three prime books, prime entry books, or in some places they are called subsidiary books, or in some other places they are also known as books of original entry. Books of original entry. These are the books. And these are not the only books, as you know, as you very well know. No, no, these are not the only books. The Purchases Journal and the Sales Journal and the General Journal, except these three, we have already learnt about Cash Book and Petty Cash Book. Those two are also prime entry books. We did this lesson. Uh, few lessons back, few lessons back, uh, we learned about cash book and petty cash book. All right. Now in this lesson, unit 10, these three. Shall we? This is the chapters or the subtopics included in this lesson, the breakdown of subtopics. Children, we have first Subtopic that is 10.1 Purchases Journal. We have Purchases Journal. Under Purchases Journal, we have source documents required to prepare the Purchases Journal, posting transactions or posting items in the Purchases Journal to the ledger accounts. Yeah, instead of posting, I'll uh, use another word, transfer, transfer, transferring of the items in the purchases journal, items in the purchases journal, items in the purchases journal, to the ledger, to the ledger accounts. Something that we have learned it is not it is, it is it is not new. It's not anything, it's not something that you haven't heard. Well, you have heard, you have we have we have talked about these prime books. Of course, of course, yes. But in this lesson, you are going you are going to prepare. You are going to prepare these prime books, and you are going to get the information in the prime books. You are going to get them to the ledger accounts from the prime books. Okay, according to the double entry system. Then we have the sales journal. The sales journal. Sales journal. Under that, source documents required to prepare the sales journal. Source documents. Then, posting the items in the sales journal to the ledger accounts. Just like uh, I explained um, above, this, this above uh, uh, subtopic in 
on the purchases journal on the sales journal also you have to transfer the items in the sales journal to the ledger items in the sales journal to the ledger okay yeah it's uh, something something very simple then children we have general journal finally instant cash transactions conducted via technological means something that is going to uh, a bit into the ICT uh, side of our subject hmm? things which are a little bit you know, um, uh, into the ICT field all right okay that's it let's go going ahead with the lesson first of all we have purchases journal children this is the purchases journal first prime book that we are gonna um, study under this lesson it's a prime entry book prime entry book no question about that it's a prime entry book is it a ledger account too is it a ledger account too hmm. well no no children it's not a ledger account it is only a prime entry book but we have learned about prime entry books which act as ledger accounts too well you know those you know you know there are some prime entry books a couple of prime entry books which are also ledger accounts they are ledger accounts too don't act like you don't know we did an entire lesson about these two prime entry books an entire lesson couple of lessons back I have done one entire lesson about these two prime entry books these two prime entry books which are considered as ledger accounts too what are those prime entry books not the purchases journal not the sales journal not the general journal no yes that's right who said that who said that good children if you remembered that's very good the primary books which has a dual role which has a dual role or which act as which are primary books as well as ledger accounts only two prime books you have learned those two are cash book and petty cash book cash book and petty cash book remember children purchases journal no no dual role sales journal no no dual role general journal no no dual role which means they are just prime entry books not ledger accounts yeah businesses purchase goods with the objective of reselling these goods are purchased either on cash basis or on credit basis okay now i'm going to underline the important parts mm -hmm important parts okay either on cash basis or credit basis you get what what, what what it says do you understand what it says it says all the businesses any business 
which is involved in trading. Any business which is involved in trading. Trading means what? What is trading? Tell me. Yeah, that's right. Trading means buying and selling goods. Buying and selling goods and services. Services can't be bought. Services can be bought. Yeah. Goods, of course, can be bought and then, you know, sold, resold. Reselling of goods. Reselling of goods. That is the main income of trading businesses. Selling of goods. Sales income. The main income of trading businesses. Trading. Because trading is buying and selling goods and services. So, these goods that are resold to customers first should be bought. Yeah, where else the businesses, the, <laughs> the shops that you go to, where else do you think that they from where else do they get the goods? Do you think Santa Claus comes and uh, brings all the goods, all the goodies and gifts? <laughs> no. No. Is it the fairy godmother or angels who descend down from the heavens who bring the goods. Where do these shops get the goods from? In order to sell, they should get the goods first. They buy. They buy from other suppliers. They buy from producers. They buy. Okay. Yeah. Buying can be done on cash basis or on credit basis. Buying can be done if the, the businesses, the shops, they can buy the goods either on cash basis. That means then and there you pay cash and you buy the goods. Bring it to the shop. Okay. You buy the goods, bring them to the shop. Okay. Then and there you pay cash. Cash basis. Cash basis purchases are known as cash purchases. That's what it says. These goods are purchased either on cash basis or on credit basis. Cash basis purchases are known as cash purchases. Cash. Cash purchases. Cash purchases, of course, should be done. Goods, are, goods should be purchased by paying cash. Then cash purchases go to the cash book. They are recorded in which prime book? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Cash book. So, children, in this prime entry book, which is the purchases journal, in this prime entry book, only credit purchases are recorded. Credit purchases. No cash purchases in the purchases journal. All right. Of course. Why do you record cash purchases in the purchases journal? When you have to record the cash purchases. When you must record the cash purchases. 
in the cash book why do you record again in the purchase journal no cash purchases are not recorded in the purchase journal only credit purchases are recorded in the purchases journal remember okay that's very important i'm stressing i'm stressing on this point because most of the children they make this mistake in exams we have come across these answers your answers you always select cash purchases no you always record cash purchases in the purchase journal it's wrong record only the credit purchases okay credit purchases of trading goods children trading goods that is the other thing credit purchases of trading goods assets if you purchase if you have a transaction where you have purchased an asset such as a, a motor vehicle or a building can be purchased and can be purchased on credit basis but those transactions are not going to this book those asset purchases okay yeah remember remember these three main points okay um i'll write them down but first of all we'll read the text goods purchased on credit basis are recorded in a separate record named as the purchases journal this is also known as the purchases day book purchases day book okay the purchases of trading goods on credit basis are initially recorded in the purchases journal okay there you go that is the that is the main uh, tagline or the point to remember purchases of trading goods purchasing of trading goods on credit basis are initially recorded initially which means uh, before you enter the transaction in any other place first very first the very first place that you should record the credit purchases of trading goods is this place purchases journal okay example if a business buys and sells stationaries the purchase of stationaries on the credit basis on credit basis on credit basis is recorded in the purchases journal okay All right so there we go when purchasing goods on credit basis the parties providing goods are known as suppliers okay parties providing goods are known as suppliers or trade creditors trade creditors the amount payable to creditors are liabilities of course liabilities because we we don't pay for the goods that we purchase we don't pay for the goods that we purchase all right we don't pay we just bring the goods we just buy the goods and bring them to sell in our shops but we don't pay for them these are credit purchases now we are talking about credit purchases naya tagano right again that's how we call it in singhala singhala yeah those parties those suppliers are creditors to our basis okay yeah the amount payable to creditors are liabilities of course suppliers when providing goods on credit prepare and send a source document including information about the supply there you go the source document 
is the invoice. The source document related or relevant for credit purchases is called the invoice. Yeah. It's called the invoice. Mm -hmm. In the perspective of the purchasing business it is the purchase invoice if we are purchasing goods the invoice is a purchase invoice the source document is a purchase invoice okay the information in the purchase invoice is required to be recorded in the purchases journal yeah all right you think of it in this manner I'll give you an example I will give you an example. Let's think of it with this example, using this example. Now children, I am a businessman, a shopkeeper, a sole trader, one known a business. And I'm carrying out a stationery shop, a bookshop. Okay. Um, so what is what are the goods that I sell? Uh, hardware items? No, 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 no. It's a bookshop. Yeah. Books and stationaries. Yeah. It's a bookshop. So I'm selling books and other stationary items. Where do I get the goods from? Where do I get the goods from? I have to buy. I have to buy from purchase. Purchase uh, from. Have to purchase from producers, suppliers. There are many, many uh, stationary book producers. You know, Atlas and uh, Promate and. I can mention a number of brands. So I'm, I'm buying the books from Atlas Company and Promate and such companies in, in our society, in our country. Those are the main producers of books. And I'm buying the pens from again Atlas Company. Pens and pencils and erasers and rulers and you know all the stationaries that you need as students i'm supplying sorry not supplying let's say selling i'm selling them okay i'm selling them from where do i buy purchase from those companies okay let's say i'm purchasing yeah let's say i'm purchasing a large stock stock of books cr books and exercise books a few boxes few stacks of books i'm buying from atlas company okay then children supplier is atlas Atlas. Okay. Supply is Atlas. Now, I have, I'm, I'm purchasing, right? I'm purchasing now. If I purchase from Atlas Company, a stock worth of 12,000 rupees, 
for this 12,000, for this amount, I need to prepare a invoice, a stock of 12,000, okay? I need to prepare an invoice, but only if I purchase on credit. Only if I purchase on credit. Okay. It's called the purchase invoice. Purchase invoice. From Atlas Company, a stock of 12,000 is purchased by me for my bookshop. Okay. So this. Purchase of 12,000 for this purchase of 12,000. I need to prepare a purchase invoice. That is the source document hmm? for my business. Purchase invoice is the source document. This source document, the purchase invoice, contains all the information of the transaction the name of the supplier, amount of the stock, value of the stock the price of the stock, any discounts, trade discounts, if there are any trade discounts, date of the purchase, everything is included in the purchase invoice. Okay, we learned about purchase invoices and other invoices and receipts and vouchers and a variety of source documents in your, in a previous lesson. Can you remember? You must remember these things. You must remember these things. These are theory knowledge, you know, the basic knowledge that you need. Um, this is the source document. Source document for this transaction or the transaction of credit purchase source document for this transaction or the or for the transaction of credit purchase okay this source document is the invoice the purchase invoice all right okay all the information in the purchase invoice is required to be recorded in the purchase journal these invoices purchase invoices are collected and recorded in the purchase journal on a daily basis yeah. Okay. Thereafter, those transactions are posted to the ledger in on a later date to, to the ledger accounts. Also, you must transfer the information from this purchases journal, from the purchases daybook. But all the invoices every day on a daily basis are collected and then recorded in the purchases journal. Okay. Good. Um, oh, I forgot to draw me the businessman. The businessman is here. I, this is me taking the goods. Okay. Right, okay. There you go. We have a purchase invoice. A purchase invoice. This is my business or uh, the business who is purchasing. Deshan Bookshop. Let's say my bookshop is Deshan Bookshop. Okay. It's in Dehibala. Main Street, Dehibala. Um, invoice number 120. The invoice number is here. All right, invoice number is here. Yeah, and the goods are purchased from manager uh, from Rashmi Bookshop. Okay, goods are purchased from Rashmi Bookshop. Rashmi
goods are purchased from Rashmi, Rashmi Bookshop. That is in Maharagama. See, I told you all the information, all the everything is here. All the information are on the purchase invoice. Yeah. Uh, then what goods that I have purchased? Mm -hmm. What goods have I purchased? The description of the purchase. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here, children, I have purchased drawing books, 40 of them, 40 of them, 40 drawing books. Then CR books, I have purchased 20. No, I'm sorry, that is 200. CR books, 200. I have bought 200. Then excise books, I have bought 120. Okay. And um, one drawing book is 100 rupees. So unit price is 100. 100. When you multiply 100 by 40, because I have bought 40, 100 into 40, it's 4,000. That is the total value of drawing books. Likewise, 130 into 200 for the CR books and 60 each. 60 each for the uh, exercise books. 60 is the unit price. That means one book is 60. Okay, one book is 60. 60 into 120, it's 7,200. Now the total that I have to pay, it's 37,200. Total I have to pay is 37,200. Okay. And children, important point. I have got a discount. Yeah. I have got a discount. 10% trade discount. Got a discount from the supplier. 10%. And that is out of 37,200, when you calculate 10%, you get the answer 3,720. That is subtracted from 37,200. The discount is deducted. And the net value is 33,480. That is the net value. 33,480. That is the net value that I have to pay. I, because I purchased. Okay. Likewise, you know, easy, 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 very, very simple things. This is the source document the purchase invoice. Yeah. But there's something more right underneath, which is, you know, a little, uh, it's a little sentence underneath the invoice. I mean, at the bottom of the invoice, huh? it's this sentence. Let's see what is this sentence. All checks should be written in favor of Deshan Bookshop and crossed. All checks should be written in favor of Deshan Bookshop and crossed. Right. What can you understand or what do you what did you realize just now? Did you realize something? I'm just asking you, did you realize something? Hmm. What did you realize? After you read the 
sentence here after you read this sentence in the bottom what did you realize all checks should be written in favor of Deshan Bukshu and crossed all checks should be written in favor of Deshan Bookshop. Deshan Bookshop is expecting the payment by check and if the payment is paid by check, if the amount is paid by check, check should be crossed. That is the meaning of this sentence, isn't it? Then who is expecting the payment, children? Deshan bookshop, which means, are they, Deshan bookshop, are they, are they are the ones who are buying? No, they are the ones who are selling. They are the ones who are selling. To whom? To Rashmi bookshop. You got it? Deshan Bookshop, they are selling to Rashmi Bookshop. Okay. Is it clear? I mean, did you get this clearly? Deshan Bookshop is the seller. Rashmi Bookshop is the buyer. So this invoice is created or is issued by Deshan Bookshop to Rashmi Bookshop. Okay, for them, for Rashmi Bookshop, it can be considered as the purchase invoice. But for Deshan Bookshop, this is a sales invoice. They're selling, you got it. This can be considered as a purchase invoice by Rashmi bookshop because Rashmi is purchasing Rashmi is purchasing from Desha got it so for Rashmi this is a purchase invoice they can consider this as a purchase invoice and uh, they should pay um, to Desha bookshop uh, if, if they are paying by uh, check they should pay with crossed checks that's what it says. And there's a condition here. This is something most of the children do not understand. This condition. It says 5 over 30. Okay, let me highlight that. I'm talking about this condition now. I'm going to highlight it. Can you see it now? Let me move to the side. Mm. Now you can see it, right? It says 5 over 30 and net 60. 5 over 30, net 60. This is a condition which is imposed by the seller. Who is selling? Deshan is selling to Rashmi. So Rashmi is the purchaser. Deshan is imposing this condition to Rashmi. Okay. And this condition means, children, it means, it means, this carefully observe okay carefully observe condition means this the amount or the total value should be settled within 60 days that is the meaning of net 60 but if the purchaser can settle within 30 days 
if the purchaser can settle within 30 days. She's gonna get a 5% discount. Got it? You understand? If the if Rashmi can pay this bill within 30 days, she's gonna get a 5% cash discount for 30 days for prompt payment. All right, all right, all right. Now, generally, the condition is imposed by the seller, the Dejan's business, to the buyer. Buyer is Rashmi's business. Rashmi should uh, pay the amount, the entire net value, that is this value. 33,480 within 60 days, okay? Should pay within 60 days. But if she is able to pay earlier, within 30 days, she's gonna get this discount. That is 5%. Okay, that is the meaning of 5 over 30. It's a cash discount and it is a, a benefit for Rashmi, the buyer, the purchaser. It is a benefit. Yeah? Don't you think it's a benefit? It's a benefit. It's a benefit, my dear children. It's a cash discount. So Rashmi is going to get uh, more of a discount more discount in addition to this trade discount she's gonna get another cash discount okay that's the meaning of this condition this is a invoice it can be a sales invoice it can be a purchase invoice all right the manager has signed it so it's validated Okay, this invoice is first of all recorded in the books of Rashmi's business. In the books of Rashmi's business, which book they should record this information? In which book? Purchases day book or the purchases journal. All right. Oh, it says uh, it is given here, children, the meaning of that condition. The condition 5 over 30, net 60, indicates that the purchaser should settle the credit within 60 days. And if she settles within 30 days, 5% cash discount will be deducted. 5% cash discount will be deducted. Okay. Right, done. Hmm. And here a little bit more about trade discounts and cash discounts. You should go through these things. They are important. They will you know, refresh your memory. Trade discount is the reduction in the listed price uh, at the time of purchase. This trade discount is deducted in the invoice and not recorded in accounts. Trade discounts are not recorded in accounts. They are deducted and the net value is recorded. Okay. After deducting the trade discount, the net purchase value, just like I said, should be recorded uh, in the purchases journal. So invoice value should go to the purchases journal. Hmm. There are something that uh, can forget. So better you keep it carefully. Hmm? Invoice value will be recorded in the purchases journal. Voila, here you have a format. This is the format of the purchases journal. Date is there, invoice number, supplier's name, total value. Here, when you record the total value, you should record the discounted value. Discounted value. You get what I'm saying, right? After the trade discount is deducted, 
after trade discount deducted after the trade discount is deducted got it okay done this is the uh, format of the purchases journal and uh, it's not something that you should uh, buy hard and memorize it's something very simple date of the transaction name of the supplier and the value of the invoice the invoice value and mention the invoice number two okay that's it all right children we have uh, some example transactions net value of the invoice number 115 goods are bought from namal 22000 22000 invoice number 115 should be recorded in the purchases journal here you go first of the month 115 namal 22000 is the net value from namal okay first of the month 10th of the month 10th of the month net value 28000 under the invoice number 65 yeah net value of the invoice number 65 goods are bought from sahan goods are bought from sahan first namal then sahan yeah okay 65 invoice number 65 10th of the month sahan 28000 next 20th of the month 20th of march um net value is 28 no 26000 invoice number 43 goods are bought from punmina no it's not punmina it's it's purnima it's purnima purnima yeah um goods are bought under the invoice number 43 value is 26000 net value is 26000 on 20th okay let's see on 20th invoice number 43 purnima 26000 all right finally children finally let's take uh, a different color so that it's clear to you net value on 25th on 25th of the month net value of the purchase is 12000 under the invoice number 48 all right net value of the uh, purchase is 12000 under the invoice number 48 bought again from purnima again from purnima that's why i used another color because purnima is the same supplier but we have bought two times from purnima purnima must be a good uh, a good businessman right We're buying more and more from purnima yeah yeah 25th of the month invoice number 48 purnima from purnima 12000 worth of goods Twenty fifth net value twelve thousand under the invoice number forty eight. Okay, twenty fifth under the invoice number forty eight from Purnima 
12,000. At the end of the month, children, because all the purchase transactions are recorded now, the purchases journal will be prepared as follows. It is already prepared. It is already prepared. So at the end of the month, you total, total the prime books, you total all the prime books, not only the purchases book. You total, and the total is how much? Total is 88,000. You get 88,000. That is the total. Total should be debited to the purchases account. That's it. The total purchases, credit purchases, remember, credit purchases. All these are credit purchases. From Namal, it's a credit purchase. From Sahan, also, it's a credit purchase. From Purnima, two times. All the purchases are credit purchases. All these credit purchases finally adds up to be 88,000. That total must be debited to the purchases account. There you go. Must be debited to the purchases account. There you go. That's it. Debited to the purchase account, 88,000. Finished. Not finished. People, where is the double entries? Where are the double entries? We just debited one amount. 88,000 in the purchases account should be credited. Should be credited. Don't look surprised. Every entry which is debited must be credited. Double entry theory, double entry system. That's how you prepare the ledger accounts. So if you prepare the purchases account and if you debit 88,000, which is taken from this purchases journal, where do you credit this 88,000? Where? Yeah. Yeah, somebody's trying to tell me that. Creditors? Creditors? You should credit 88,000. Um, to an account called creditors account. Yeah, you came very close, very close. Not to one account, children. You should credit individually to these creditors accounts. Individually, which means normal. You should draw a separate account called normal account. Credit twenty two thousand. Draw a separate account called Sahan's account. Credit 28,000. Draw a, another account called Purnima account. And credit 26 and 12,000 both. Purnima credit both. Then 88,000 is debited in the purchases account. That's all right. No problem. Debited in the purchases account and credited in all these accounts, one by one. Okay. That's it. Let's see. Posting transactions recorded in the purchase journal to the ledger. Well, uh, they have again explained how the ledger accounts should be created. Uh, let's go through very quick, huh? very quick. Total in the purchases journal will be debited to the purchases account. Too quick. Okay, I'll slow down. Total in the purchases journal will be debited to purchases account. All right. Thereafter, each value will be credited separately the creditors accounts
each value will be credited separately to the respective creditors accounts okay again the same thing right the total in the purchase journal will be debited to the purchase account yeah okay creditors accounts are liability accounts therefore an increase in liability mm. yeah yeah an increase in liability yeah is should be in the credit side increase in liability uh, should be recorded in the credit side so all the creditors accounts are credited Crisis is debited. Okay. Do you want me to draw the ledger accounts? Seriously? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Purchases account. And I need one, two, three, four creditors accounts. All right. I'm just drawing T4 maths, children. I can't waste the time. I can't use the time uh, to draw full formats. Just to show you some accounts. Uh, drawing full formats is, you know, is unnecessary. So I'll just draw T4 maths. This is the purchases account. And I need Namal, then Sahan, then Purnima. Namal, Sahan, Purnima. Again, Purnima. Oh, no need of another account. Purnima is the same person. Two transactions from the same supply okay debited to the purchase account 88,000 see so you debit 88 I'll move so you can see it you debit 88 saying the description should be Eighty-eight. Okay, okay. I, I I hope it's clear to you. It's eighty-eight. The description should be creditors. Creditors. Date should be here. The last date of the month. Thirtieth. No, thirty-first. Thirty-first. Third. Date. Okay. Purchase account debit, debit side. Debit total that is eighty-eight thousand. Individual creditors accounts debited with individual amounts. Debited with individual amounts, right? So now my account twenty-two thousand and Sahan's account twenty-eight thousand and. Purnima's account debited. Namal is debited. Sahan is debited. Where's your attention? How can these accounts? How can I debit these accounts after debiting this entry again? The double entries should be debited. Children, be attentive. Okay. Be mindful. Be mindful. You do this mistake all the time. You debit one entry, and instead of crediting the double entry, you again debit the other accounts too, just like I did. Something that you always do, a mistake. That's what I sh showed you. 
don't do that mistake namaz account should be credited with 22000 22000 sahans account should be credited with 28000 purnima's account should be credited with 26 and 12000 on those two dates okay dates are here so don't forget to mention the dates all right mention the dates and description should be purchases 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 okay okay double entries recorded each individual creditor should have an individual account and those individual creditors account should be credited okay purchases account is debited that is how you transfer the information in the purchases journal at the end of the month to the ledger accounts beautiful isn't it <laughs> well it's the double entry system children and today you learned one important journal that is the purchases journal where we record all the credit purchases only the credit purchases credit purchase transactions credit purchases of trading goods yeah and how after all those transactions are recorded how the information is transferred to the ledger okay that's it i hope you understood all these children it's simple accounting bookkeeping uh, things bookkeeping recording of transactions in books of accounts right until uh, next time practice some questions go through some um, activities in the textbook and be good i'll meet you again with the sales journal that is the second journal in the lesson thank you very much for being with me see you soon